Hello everybody, welcome back to the Back Post Podcast. In this episode, we talk about Spurs absolutely smashing Southampton and how Bale will fit into their system. We also talk about United defeat Palace and their very poor start to the season and who do they need to sign to make this work. We also talk about Chelsea v Liverpool and that poor decision from Christensen. Also, we argue about is Thiago Silva too old for the Premier League. We also bring up FPL and game week two, all this, and we preview the weekend's football coming up in the Premier League. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, boys, how are we doing? I am fantastic. Before we get into any actual football talk, we really do need to address what's on Adam's head right now. Yeah, okay, so uh, I've lost my earphones. <laughs> Uh, so I've got to wear my turtle beaches. So you know, to, to make it seem a bit more reasonable, I've put a muffler on top of an empty beer bottle, so it looks like I'm commentating. Uh, you actually, you actually did that. I'm actually, I'm actually doing it. The back post so is welcome. sponsored by Virgins. <laughs> Cheers, Jeff. Uh, not the airways, just just Virgins. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, this is probably the first week, Josh, that you'll probably be the happiest out of us three. Do you want to, uh... What a rare time. Yeah, um, what a rare time. What a great time for all. What we have to debate is what's actually a better result for Tottenham, the 5-2 against Southampton, or not having to play Leighton Orient yesterday. <laughs> it's definitely Which not playing Leighton Orient. It's definitely not playing Leighton Do you realise how many games we've had to play? Like Our players were probably just like, oh my God, we can rest. Yeah, so, you're, so, so you're, right now you have to play a Premier League game, a League Cup game, a Europa League game, uh, game on the Thursday and then another Premier League game in one week is that right? Well at one point I don't know the exact in and outs but that, that is correct but at one point we were looking at 10 games in 21 days that is Harry Kane's worst nightmare <laughs> that, that's, that's <laughs> everyone's nightmare. worst nightmare I don't have time for that <laughs> what, 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 what are we going to do when it gets to a round up it's like what, how's your week been Josh I don't fucking remember <laughs> well, <laughs> well uh, let's go back to the 5-2 Josh because that was a mad Mad game. Uh, it was just the um, Son and Harry Kane show. Yeah, yeah, anyone that's paid to talk about football uh, while we sit here doing it for free and has placed and, and decided that Harry Kane doesn't deserve a mention team of the week should be removed <laughs> from football media immediately and journalism, I think. Uh, that, I know that just sounds inherently biased, but literally, Son was class. He scored four goals. When we look at attacking players, we look at it got direct goal involvements, don't we? Which is assists plus goals. Mm-hmm. No one else. Um, I don't think I can't remember the last time someone had five gold goal involvements in a game. Off the top of my head, directly. No, yeah. can, can you? Mm. Like, I don't want to. It doesn't matter. Kane doesn't care. He's had a class no, game. He really but... care. He's sat at home for you. <laughs> at the same time. It's just outrageous. Like Wilfred Zaha obviously had a good game. Sadio Mane obviously had a good game. They didn't have as good a game as Kane. <laughs> Look <laughs> at the fantasy football points. Like it's oh, just, so it's just oh, yeah. imagine you captained him this week. Ah, oh, Ben Higginson, shout out to you. Uh, I don't. He... I I took him out of my team for Marshall this week. <laughs> ben Higginson oh. triple captained him. Our old uni friend triple captained him. I yeah. thought he just. Ca- oh, what. A- G? He's a triple captain. He knew. Oh, and considering He's... that Kane very rarely scores at the start of seasons, that's a bold bold move by manager that Higginson is, there. And it's planted him directly on the top of the fantasy football tree. That... Um, I don't really know what to say about it, really. Um, I've never, for a very long time, I haven't seen such a massive contrast between the first and second half. Yeah, it was, In terms it of, was... it was bad. Like obviously, yeah, you, were saying, you, you didn't, very you much didn't like really have the best game first half. No, well, I mean, to be fair, it's... I mean, it was the the build up was marginally offside, but Kane's first goal that was ruled out. Let's not forget about that. That Bicey, mm. yeah, what a goal! Like his his part of the goal and Doherty's assist was actually all legit. It's just in the build up, Son's run was slightly offside. Like it was a shame that that didn't count. Um, the one player I'd like to give just a massive shout out to, and. I, I know that you watched this game, Jay. I don't know if you did, Adam. I watched the highlights. Okay. Um, from watching it, and I could only assume it was to be rested or they'd agreed or he had a knock. Do you see why I've been talking about Ndombele with such high praise, Jay, now? 
Yeah, I mean, I always knew that he was good. It's just that he, he didn't show up for you until now. Yeah, I know, but I do remember Ooh. a conversation where you guys, like, insinuated that I didn't know anything about him and, like, fuck off, did you know anything about Ndombele from Leon? And I was like, no, he's really, really, really fucking good. He's, like, he's... If he can come good, it, like, Suzuko was shit for us for a year and then sparked into life and is an average player. If Ndombele can spark into life for us, we are, we are talking about one of I'm not saying the one of the best midfielders in the Premier League if he can do what he can do regularly which is a big ask yeah yeah. Well, at the same time you've, this is a that is the first game I've seen him be have a like an unbelievable game a fantastic game prior to that you know he got beat off Everton so he's I mean he didn't he didn't he didn't play but the point I'm making he is... He got subbed on. All I'm saying is, hot take, he's already better than Pogba. I admit, Pogba's disappointing me at the moment and he's been disappointing me week in, week out for probably the past year. <laughs> but he, he, I can't see him being better than him because, well... It's, because it's you're a Manchester United out, fan but... and you can't, you can't well, see past course, that. Of course, yeah, yeah, but... yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly that. <laughs> oh, <that's> not... <laughs> right, no. <What> more. <laughs> I'll, I'll round this off. I'll round this off. Um, just to keep up, Son and Kane. There's not really much to say. You score four goals, you assist four goals, and score one. That's incredible. Well, I don't know what I could possibly add to what they've done. Like, it needs no words. Amazing. Um, mm-hmm. The team looked looked good. Um, Doherty. If that assist had carried for Kane, that would have been great for my fantasy team as well. It didn't. Lo Celso came on and just brought like what Ndombele was bringing, but a bit more consistently. So to see both of them in the same team at some point would be great. Hoiberg no longer looks like a piece of crap, which is excellent. He's, he had a really, really solid game. Um, and as the final point, I think we can all agree, never a fucking penalty. <laughs> Can't remember what I like. It, 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 it ricocheted off Winks his ankle while Doherty's hand was out, and like so, the the, the ball was struck. It hit Winks his ankle, travelled directly upwards, and hit the under part of Doherty's arm. <laughs> it just wasn't. It just wasn't a penalty. Yeah, it's it, there's new laws now with with, with all this bullshit now, isn't it? and and. It it VR picked up where it left off, and it's had some it's had some okay moments. I don't want to slander it too much, but it's picked up where it's left off and caused some more great controversy for us lot to talk about. Hmm. Well, I mean that's that's, 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 that's all I've got to to say on the game. Really, obviously, I've got um, we still let them score two, although I will not count that penalty. I think there were the ball was in the net three times before the first goal even counted, so it was it could have been a fantastic like a. a, a game to go down in history but as it stands it was a solid game and you know I got quite worried actually because Kyle Walker-Peters the young right back we sold uh, produced a worldie of an assist for uh, Southampton's first and I was like here we go there we go there's the prodigal (laughs) son returning to smite us (laughs) Um, he's, he's, but he's, no. a, he's a good player I, I like him I mean let's talk mm. about the the obvious thing uh, Bale is now a Spurs player and do you, do you think you know after that performance as well how do you think he's going to fit into this side now like what tactically where's he going to go what's he going to do what's his think, role going to be I think he can play I think the, he's been brought in with the intention of playing multiple roles but I think the most obvious thing you can look at is and I'm not just saying he will always have a special place in my heart for that night in Ajax but if you look just just at the stats of Kane, Son and Mora up front. And there's that fun meme of those two scary anime three-headed dragons and two of them are like scary, scary and then the, the third one's like, Nyeh. and he just wasn't he, like? he just wasn't visible. Um, <laughs> and honestly, while watching the game, I texted my mate, I have not seen Mora this game. Like, do you know when you just kind of like a player pops, gets on the ball and you go, oh my God, he's actually on the pitch. Yeah. So oh, you're That here. happened. <laughs> that happened like two or three times. I kept like being like, oh, he just doesn't exist. And he just... The thing is with Mora that's so frustrating is we we know he's a fast player, don't we? 
you know he's a fast player. Yeah, he's, he's the he, slowest speedy winger I've ever seen. I've seen him run. I've seen him in three nil at Old Trafford run the entire length of the pitch and slam slap the ball in. I I, can, I know he can do it, but he just like starts running and suddenly Jack Stevens is outpacing him to the ball. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> You're lying. I know how fast you are. And if he gets fit, 50% of the Gareth Bale we let go and 25% of the Gareth Bale that was won Madrid four Champions Leagues in his time there, not single-handedly, but in some cases kind of, mm-hmm. is an upgrade on that. So for me, he slots on the right. And for me, he can take a lot of that, that weight as a striker as well, when Kane inevitably his ankles turn to glass. Or so, when Kane um, wants to be efficiently, wants to just be a midfielder. Or if Kane goes, you striker. know what, strip my name off, change it to Hoddle, get me on that pitch. Then that also <laughs> is an option. Yeah, um, exactly. And to be fair as well, you know, you've, you, we mentioned it briefly, but Spurs have the, a mental run of games to come and to have just someone of Bale's quality and Moore's quality to interchange and come in that, and don't that forget about um, that's not even mentioning who uh, didn't start um, Stephen Bergvine who I'm incredibly excited oh, about yeah. like he, Nicola Pe- Nicholas Pepe stares at the ceiling and wishes he was Stephen Bergvine <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know right, I think it, it's, it's, me... it's all looking good just just as a quick uh, just from the start from the Everton game this is a drastic week of changing fortunes, like from that Everton game. Oh, yeah, I think right. I heard this a lot. Like <laughs> the Bale signing was a win, and it is that exciting feeling. Regular on is get him incredible. Back. Five yeah, two. It's just it, for that's me. The season Spurs begins happiness for me. That's now. enough Spurs happiness. United yeah, Palace. Let's move on. <laughs> let's move. Oh shit! <laughs> you yeah, bet you wish you were going time. back to me now, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I do. United uh, Palace. Adam, t- talk to me about it, man. <laughs> it, well, I don't know if you guys watched it. Nope. I radioed it actually. But Good. I can. Uh, yeah, it was a shit show from from the start. Uh, obviously, not signing any players was massive. Not just for the squad and the way we play, but for morale. We have an old Van der Beek start. Um, so he came on, but you know. Like you just said, Tottenham signing Bale is a win. It's it boosts them around the whole squad. We didn't have that before the first game, so it was like so when the team sheet come out, it was the same team. Basaka was dropped for some reason for Fosu Menza, hmm. uh, and just from the hmm. start, I was like, it's just not going to go well. This is it. Yeah, I mean, when Van der Beek came on, he did look like a quality little player. He, oh yeah, I, of course. I really like the look of him. He looks. Mm-hmm. It's like a sexy player. But, um, I will give you... You deserve to lose that game 110%. Okay. However, I will yeah. give you the, again, shite penalty. Mm-hmm. B, never never off his line. Like, yeah. technically, yes, well, he, if you take the rule book at me, he was off his line. But nah, he wasn't off his line. That so I don't know how the rules it? stand because his, his, his back foot is on the line. So I don't understand... And I didn't understand how that wasn't seen. Yeah. Also, I mean, that I don't someone know, else but... can retake it is an absolute joke of a rule. Yeah, it, it should have. I you should have had to retake that penalty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. yeah. No, I agree. And uh, the... but it, it, we shouldn't blame. Obviously, we shouldn't blame the, the loss on that because the 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 standout performance for me was Lindelof because he was fucking dreadful. <laughs> like he 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 was bullied by Zaha and Jordan are you and that is just unacceptable in my eyes he was he just looks so weak it's not he harsh to be bullied it's not unacceptable to be bullied by Wilfred Zaha I mean <sighs> all right we had a good game as well the, at the end of the day it's Crystal Palace that we should have we should have beaten we did not play well one bit going back to what you said before with Pogba I am slowly starting to fall out of love with him because he doesn't a big a big thing happened halfway through the game um, Pogba lost the ball and they countered and he jogged back and he didn't you know he didn't try and get the ball back and then two minutes later Bruno lost the ball and he closed down two players and won it back he ran for about 30 seconds to get the ball back because that's the difference between these players 
we seriously need to buy some players. That's what I was going to mention. Yeah. I, can't, I keep we, saying it. At? Well, I couldn't tell you because we should have signed Bale. We didn't. We should have signed Thiago. We failed. We should have signed the left back that Tottenham have signed. I can't pronounce his name. Regulon. Reg- Regulon. Regular. 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 So <laughs> it's it's upstairs, mate. I can't stress it enough. I don't think we'll get Sancho. Um, the one, so then the one who, that is quite looking replacing. likely is um, Telles from Porto. Telles, the left back. Yeah, yeah like, like, he, he looks like a decent player because Shaw had a bit of a shit game as well. Mm. No, well, you needed a left back for a while now, and when you when you talk about Thiago, mm. that's particularly interesting because if you really want an example of Man United failing to move, they have been monitoring Thiago's situation since twenty thirteen. No, exactly. Mm. <laughs> should have signed him. That's when Bale under... left Tottenham. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is very. We, we, poor. we had the potential to sign him three times and 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 didn't. Mm. And, and now and to be Liverpool fair, got him for twenty million. Yeah, twenty five million. Exactly. That was what I was trying to say. The Liverpool did not buy him for a lot of money as well. And that that same with Regulon. We the only the only reason why the transfer failed with United is because we didn't accept a buyback term. Because for Madrid, yeah. Madrid wanted, I don't know how much it was, but Tottenham was like, yeah, sure. Well, as we'll far as that. I'm aware, it was roughly. And they've got a great left back. It was roughly about, I think we, this might be not quite right, but roughly we spent about thirty million on Regulon, mm-hmm. and if, within two years, Madrid can buy him back at any time for forty five, right? So right. a, he, they might, you know, even if he's class. Madrid still might, you know, sign another world class player. They've got Fertel and mm-hmm. Mendy. They've still got Marcelo for a bit. It might just not really cross their mind to do it. But even if they do, essentially it's Madrid saying, here's a player for a while, in the same way that you'd get a loan, but also here's 15 million on top of that. Mm. And then, so I get why it's not ideal, but also he's a quality player and I don't understand why he wouldn't. And also, B, if any other club comes in for him, they can just ma- they have the first option to match that. For, if you're if United are going to sell a player for big money anyway, it's going to mm. be to a Madrid or Barcelona, and that that's a reality. So I don't understand like if Liverpool come in, a United could be like, oh no, now Madrid have to like <laughs> match mm. the bid. It was a very strange system, and I don't really. I think it was basically a bit of dick measuring from Edward Wood there. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was. He, he thinks he can. He can. Get all these deals in, and, and he's not got one so far, is he? I'll tell so, you who has got deals though. Bloody Daniel Levy. Come on, Regulon. Pop over here. So, United, <laughs> uh, we're going to take bail from you. Okay, can you give us a bit of a transfer fee? No, we're not going to do that. We'll take him on loan. I mean, okay, that's great. We get him on, we get him off our wage bill. So, yeah, go on then. Yeah, we're only paying 40% of it. Fucking take it or leave it. What? <laughs> no. It is very poor as well for United to have a Champions League. Uh, spot this year and be in the Champions League and still miss mm-hmm. out on players who will then ultimately go to Spurs who are playing in the Europa League like there's got to be something going wrong in your uh, upstairs as yeah, you it's, said it's bigger than we all, all understand it is as well but also at the same time and um, this isn't just I know I always dig him out but you're a professional football player right mm-hmm. I know there's Champions League or Europa League at stake but if I tell you you can go and play under Mourinho or Solskjaer come on yeah, that's, like, a huge, that's a huge pull, but it, also you could use the same with, do you want to go play for Manchester United or Spurs? That's a pull in itself. That's fair, so but I think, so, players, I think players with agents now have such a better understanding of traje- trajectories of clubs. And mm. with United, I mean, to be honest, I don't until these signings, I didn't really see it with Tottenham, but with United, you can see no upwards trend. Can you, like, you, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to just dig you out, but you can't see a, that many positives. I don't think. Well, no, you, you're right. So for the for the Palace game, there was no strategy strategy in in our in our attack force. So it was sort of, it looked like we was trying to counter attack Crystal Palace. <laughs> so when we did get when we did win the ball back in defence, we counter attacked very well, but then got to the got to the box and then panicked and didn't know what to do. That's when everyone stands still. Yeah. So we this is where we need a player like Sancho. To come in and and add a bit of spice to the front the front three because Marshall had a shocker. I think we had maybe one shot on target, two shots on target, and they were outside the box. 
Yeah, Greenwood missed. Like Greenwood, I, I, I know he's young. I know, he's, but the fact that kind of you handed him that number eleven shirt and said, "Right, come on, big bollocks." Maybe it's Solskjaer being a bit naive there because even though he's class, he still shouldn't be relied upon because mm. that's a recipe for disaster. Same with Daniel James. These players should be able to come in for a little bit, uh, drop out for a few games, have half an hour. Like that's oh, where you see the best. But no, apparently now you're gonna sell Daniel James for twelve million to Leeds, which I love. Mm. Uh, but at the moment, we we can't. We've not got the other the players above him to to fill in. Have, have exactly, they? So exactly. they have to start. Um, but yeah, overall it was a day well, to remember. Boys, let's not forget that you know this all this all doom and gloom. But come on, you did smash the mighty mighty Luton in the Carabao Cup. Let's not forget <laughs> what a it massive was such achievement a boring game. that is. <laughs> it's, the, the, I, the first half an hour was so forgettable it, it was it was shit we didn't look up for it I know it was looting and we eventually put three past them but we just did, we didn't even play a weakened squad we had all the big players out there apart from Bruno and Rashford really yeah now that uh, well it was it, it was quite it was relatively weakened, wasn't it? Like you had. Like... Well, I expected more reserve play. I expected Men- Mengi to come in. I expected other players of his caliber to at least be on the bench, and they didn't even get a sniff in the team. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, I think um, an answer as long as he can just stay fit, which is such a massive if. Um, a, a slight answer to United might be to just drop Lindelof out for Bay for a little while. I think that. But again, Bailly's one of those players where it, it, it's so 50 50 with him. But he can, he name me a centre back that you have that isn't. Well, exactly. <laughs> like, he can produce the greatest tackle in the world, go clean through someone, get up, and then break someone's leg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's that, it's that, it's, it, the one worrying thing about that game is obviously the fact that it was a penalty, but again, I am convinced and it doesn't make it not a penalty that penalty was 100% searched for like he executed it well he 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 did get contact but it was mm. so clear just waited for the contact and that's worryingly seems to be the united way at the moment and that's not me just digging at the fact that you got the most penalties last season but do you, you know, want to watch united last night. when really you're mm. watching 90 minutes of football hoping for a penalty. That's not why you want to go and watch football. That's like the, one of the only tactics that is evident in your lineup right now. Mm. Yeah, it's like, and also like the footage from Palace of like Bruno Fernandes going down like a sack of shit. Like I want to like Bruno Fernandes as a player, but oh, oh that was, God. that was bad, Adam. That was bad. It wasn't. That was, he stood on his foot. Fuck off. Adam, there, you can there see the foul. As there you is, can see there the is... gap between his, the two feet. There is slow motion footage of a Crystal Palace player. I think it might have been Mitchell. I'm not entirely sure. Going nowhere near him, and he flings his leg up and holds it and rolls. That's that's the United way now. Um, should we move on to Chelsea? Yeah, we should probably move on. Adams, Adam, <laughs> just digging him a hole, don't we? We can move on and to... leaving him in there. <laughs> uh, we can move on to Chelsea, Liverpool. Uh, it's an interesting game uh, for 44 minutes. The, uh, I think we had a plan going into this game, going against Liverpool, a very strong Liverpool. Uh, and the plan was to sit deep, try and soak up a lot of their pressure and use Timo Werner's pace and ability to nick something out of it. And that was working. That was completely working. We got in behind a couple of times. We just didn't pull the trigger. And that was very frustrating. Very, very frustrating because there's one moment I think Kante was on the end of it. It was a beautiful play from like from Werner to Havertz, then to Kante. And unfortunately, Kante is not that player that should be on the end of it, but he was in that situation and he just didn't, or he just should have just twatted it as hard as he could and it might have gone in. <laughs> he should have, that's what should have happened, and it might not have gone in. But Kante, unfortunately, it might have also gone into row Z, but you, yeah, yeah, but you, yeah, but that's better than stopping, turning around, passing, and then losing the ball. Ultimately, yeah, and the only thing I will say is I've seen, and and again, I'm just going to play a bit of devil's advocate here. You might hate me for it, Jay, but I've seen you say a lot that it was an even game until the red card, and I think that's quite a a strange way of looking at a game. No, I don't want to. So no, so it's not. It wasn't an evil even game. It was a game where we had a clear plan to you know respect Liverpool's 
ability. They, they're a better side than us at the moment. We 100% knew that going into this game. We respected that and we had a plan that was working until Christensen decided to take to fucking take him out <laughs> with a, a bear hook from behind. And uh, a lot of people have come out and said that, you know, for me, when I uh, initially I was like, Christensen is at fault. Uh, it was his problem. Like defensively, you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, you know, a world class de- centre back wouldn't throw two arms around a player. They'd go in with a foot. They'd go, you know what I mean? Or, but a lot of people are saying it's Kepa's fault because he had no trust, little trust in Kepa dealing with that situation, dealing with Mane in that situation. He's just gone and done that. Um, yeah, I, I get that, but we've already a discussed the fact that it's better to go a goal down than a man down. Hundred percent. And B, what I will say is that for me. Even though yet you can you can look at this red card and go oh it's just one red card in a moment, for me, having Mane and Salah running at Christiansen will always end up in either him conceding or a red card. Like in my mind, I know you say you have that game plan, but at the same time you spent, and I don't want to go about your spend, but you've 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 reinforced your front so much. So much. Like, obviously, it's quality. Ziyech and Pulisic and Havertz and Werner. Class. But at the same time, if you've got Mane and Salah running at a back two of Christiansen, Tamore and Zuma with a 36-year-old Thiago Silva in there as well, you are going to bring them down. Uh, uh, you're going to Wes Morgan it and put in a, a terrible challenge. Or no, okay, no, they're going to go past you. And I, I know that's... you're bringing Mendy in. But they're that's going to score past Kepa. No, that's very easy to say, and and it's true. But ultimately, what the problem with that one on one was, we were pr- pressing quite high to try and get the goal, and uh, Henderson was was be put on the ball in their half and was allowed a, a tremendous amount of time to whip it a perfect ball to Mane. Like maybe some of them midfield players, the Kovacic, the Kante, the Georgina, should have closed them down much quicker than they did to put in a defender in that situation uh and oh yeah and also we are talking about Salah and Mane here they're like best front mm. for attacking players in the Premier League right now of course um you bring up Thiago Silva he's been he's playing tonight against Barnsley I cannot wait to watch that uh this <laughs> I can't wait to see Thiago Silva against Barnsley what a weird statement to make but uh He's 36, everyone loves to mention it, but my God, is he a fucking beast, man. I hope he proves everyone wrong. He beat us all yeah, of you've us. you've got to remember, we've not fight. seen him play yet, so it's it's very easy to say he's 36, he's past it, but we've not seen him yet. It's Let very easy to I, say that. I, because I, I, stand I, I, would like you, I just want you to name me one player in the league that's 36. Let's not... F- yeah, right, Josh, I get that, but let's not forget this man <laughs> played against Bayern can, Munich can in you, the, the Champions League final. Can you name me no, because I'm not an encyclopedia. Like <laughs> no, I, I, I can't name one. The, the closest I can think of is Phil Glenn Murray, who's just been chipped off. Jagielka is, is does not fair? play in the. It does not play. He's on the bench games for in the Premier League. <laughs> yeah, he's on the bench for Listen, Sheffield. Right, no, I hundred percent get this thirty-six year old business. I do, and and ultimately this this. I've said this a lot now. This isn't a, sh- a long fucking out. The sun's come out, and I'm very overexposed. Like I am white right now. Hold on, there we go. Um, so the this isn't a short term fix. This was oh, we have the opportunity to sign Thiago. It is, it is, fucking it is a short term fix. Sorry, yeah, it's not a long term <laughs> fix. We have the opportunity right now to sign Thiago fucking Silva, the 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 beast that he is. We're gonna sign him for a couple like a year or two. Get him in. See what he can do. How bring some fucking strength, some some men, winning knowledge into that back line. Something they do not have at all. That's 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 great business to me. I don't care what anyone else says. Yeah. I agree with you, Jay. I think it's just Josh being a bit bitter. I don't. Just, it's not. It's it's I wouldn't take him. If you say to me, you wouldn't right take Thiago Silva. Wouldn't take him. If you was offered him, no, I would you not. wouldn't take him. I wouldn't. Josh, you would say no. I would no, not take him. No. He might. If he, pro- no, if he proves me wrong, he proves me wrong. Te- fucking five years ago, I take Thiago Silva. I do not take. Uh, I, I do not take a no, player who's been man. in France for that long and reached one Champions League final. One. Oh, so it's Thiago Silva's fault they didn't reach the what they He's, only reached one and when they no. did they only con- they only they only conceded one against Barcelona of which we conceded seven you conceded like seven in one game Bayern Munich that's what oh, what did I say Barcelona 
fuck's sake, Bayern um, Munich, that's what I meant. But no, I'm, no, I'm sorry, <laughs> me saying I will not take a 36-year-old player when we've just had to get rid of Vertonghen, who's died at 34, like, does not does not make me bitter. Like, if he proves me wrong, he proves me wrong. I promise you, I don't give a shit if you believe me, it's not bitterness. It is a firm belief that the Premier League is the most physical league in the world, and a 36-year-old who's been used to playing in France for however many years, and then even before that... Italy with AC Milan where defenders also go to die when they pass 32 um, will not cut it in the physical league and like I've already said players like bloody Zaha and Dwight McNeil and Son will will run past him and he will make late clumsy challenges if he finds himself in that position that's what I think and I know it's for free if you brought him in as a coach fucking brilliant Hi, Thiago Silva. Coach these players. But if you put too much stuff on relying him to defend against the likes of Salah and Mane and Greenwood and Martial and fucking all of the players, I think he's going to struggle. Because, like I said, I cannot name a 36-year-old that plays in the Premier League now and I cannot name the last player over the age of 34 that I saw in the Premier League that went, fuck me, I'd have him at Tottenham. I don't give a fuck what you say. Oh, Monstro, is that my club? He's going to beast out your club. He's going to beast out everyone else's club. He's a great defender. He's going to be. He's going to be our rock for the next year easily because because we literally because we don't have anyone else to be our rock. Uh, I think he's up for the challenge. Uh, I quickly want to mention before we end this part. I want to mention that we probably didn't really underestimate Liverpool, but now that they've signed two good, really good players. And also, you know, didn't sweat against us beating us. I, maybe our predictions was wrong. I I put them third. I don't know if they're. Well, no, no, absolutely. Third. Let's let's absolutely second, let's absolutely quickly revisit. Let's quickly revisit our predictions after the transfer window slammed shut. Because fuck me, I'm yeah. back in Tottenham to overtake United now. No, so am yeah, I. Yeah, so like, I, let's, I, let's I, I, think Arsenal, I think Arsenal finish above us. Honestly, yeah. yeah. So um, possibly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, unless and and that Thiago came on for your Liverpool, and and to be honest, he's got a lot of praise for it, and rightfully so. He was really, he was really good. But also, hey, at least one club signed minutes. a good Thiago, eh? Uh, yeah, a good he was, Thiago. He was off, Josh, mate. Thiago Silva so, uh, is a world class player. Still is. Was and was, he, was when 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 did it stop? Was. He was in the Champions League final last season. When did he Mate, stop being a world class player? One off. Ah, uh, okay. One off. When games. did he? When did that stop? I don't remember a moment where he stopped being a world class centre back. It stopped the minute he put the Chelsea shirt of on. Of course, Mate, exactly. Well, Thank you, Adam. It's, it's, it probably. Right. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Won't we? We'll fucking see. We'll I fucking can't see. wait to see when, when fucking Corley Woodrow bangs a hat trick <laughs> against him. And... Oh, Thiago <laughs> You know what? I think it stopped the moment Jay sang Thiago Silva down the mic for Blues fans oh, TV. That's when it stopped. Right, right. the end of part one. We'll come back to part two for next week's fixtures. Right, so just out of interest on part two, just moving slightly away from football, I've got some cherry popping candy here. And so that's I the thought, that's the worst thing you can eat on in a podcast. <laughs> Cherry popping candy. <laughs> no, no, yeah. But I thought I could just do a little bit of ASMR just to start oh. this uh, <laughs> this this half. Uh, um. What a time! Great. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, Jay. We can talk about football now if you want. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, do we have to? Should we just become an ASMR <laughs> podcast? Going. What kind of foods can we eat? Maybe some cereal. Anyway, uh, FBL, our FBL league, game week two. We mentioned it a little bit earlier because Ben Higginson, some reason, he just knew that Harry Kane was going to have a great game and triple captain mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Harry Kane. So he's now at the top with 158 points, two Ws. Uh, I want to hear how Josh is doing. How are you doing, Josh? Go down. I'm all right, you know, actually, because even though I'm really upset that I left so much so many points on my bench, like so many. They all did really well. I benched them all. Um, <laughs> at least the person I did face, like, smashed it. He got like even with the even if I had bloody bench boost, that guy was actually it'd be probably. Oh, you've got close. eighteen but points still, on the bench. 
he was That's uh tough, man. yeah no i had a lot he was it he was he was it was maybe i would have actually been closer to him than i think but hey he deserved the win whoever you were i can't remember but <laughs> um i need to start i need to just you know i took son out i had son as captain last week and this week i took him out i um, took him out as well Werner's starting to piss me off this is his last chance oh, he's gonna score against um, Baggins. he's gonna I, well, yeah, it's West Brom. That's how I've left him in. I don't know if I'm going to captain him. I might give it back to De Bruyne um, or Salah. But at the moment, I'm thinking, you know what, Werner? You could have one more chance against fucking West Brom. <laughs> and if you don't do it, you know, fuck off with Thiago Silva. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got... I've, to be fair, I've been lucky both weeks because I had... Uh, I've had two pretty dead weeks. Last week was worse than this week, but I've had pretty two pretty poor weeks, but the person I've come up against hasn't done very well in both times. This one was a bit closer. Also, fuck you, John Egan, for getting a red card. Minus two points. <laughs> what a prick, man. Uh, and just before we move on to you, Adam, I've done. I've already done my transfer. Yeah, which is what, probably, what have you put in? Probably stupid to be fair to do your transfer so early. But... I got rid of Havertz and put Rodriguez in. I put Rodriguez Ooh. in as well. I took out you know, a lack of a lack of faith in his own team. I got already, rid of Adam. Pulisic. It's all crumbling. He's playing as yeah. a and put Rodriguez in. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So but, I, I, yeah, Rodriguez is just smashing it in the minute. He seems to be involved with a lot. You you got to get some star players in when they're when they're doing bits. Mm. So that's why I've got him in. But going back to I swapped, what we uh, what we mentioned before, me thinking I'm a tactical genius, so Harry <laughs> Kane out my squad and put <laughs> Tony Marshall in, who got me two points by the way. Uh, <laughs> that's only that's only thirty two less than Kane. <laughs> <laughs> but what's more frustrating is I did really well this week. Yeah, I had you, you Calvert it. Lewin, who was I oh know you want me captain at Ubamiang, Son, Dunk got a clean sheet, Jimenez scored. I did well, but if I had Kane, I think I'd be I'm seventh at the moment, so I'm doing us proud at the moment, boys. How many points do you have? A hundred and thirty. If you'd had Kane in, you would have been the all time. You would have won. Yeah, you like the, the the highest this week was one four five. In total, don't say that. He's got, but, uh, mate. You, a, but then again, you would have had to get rid of someone. That's how the points work. But um, also, shout out just to, as uh, to Richard and Elliot, who are still up there. They're in both yeah. third and fifth, respectively. So they're smashing it. What, uh, as what happens if it's I It's a win long this? season. It's a long season. As if you win this, Adam, me and Josh have to buy you a top, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Which, which will be weird. Just, I, I will say that I've also done my early transfer, and I've taken out Adama Traore. So watch him. Do oh yeah, he's gonna get out of it now. I, I thought I brought in Big Phil Foden because he's gonna keep getting subbed on and he's gonna keep popping a few goals away. I did think of Foden because be now that Sil, now that Silver's gone, he's gonna he's gonna be turned to a lot more, I think. And um, he's only six point five, which is the exact price as Triori. So that's good. Let's see how that's that a good out. I'm disappointed he didn't get a better squad number this season, just as a really petty little point. Mm. Like it's the same with you, Trent. Fucking sort your lives out. <laughs> Trent, what's, what's 66, Trent 66. 66, Trent. Yeah. And then um, Foden's 47. It's just not acceptable. Peak. All right, let's move on to uh, <laughs> the games coming up this weekend. First of all, Brighton United, uh, uh, the redemption game, Adam. <laughs> yeah, um, so big mid-table clash game. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it this weekend? We're the first game in a week, aren't we? Half twelve kickoff. I'm going to be hungover because, by the way, it's my birthday tomorrow. That's when this comes uh, out. So happy birthday! So yeah. Uh, anyway, happy birthday. Yeah. So Brighton. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, they got. They, they beat. Was it Newcastle? They beat last week. Yeah, three nil. Three nil. They looked. Well, I know it's only like Newcastle, but they looked quite convincing. So we're going to have to be on our best behaviour. Don't fucking say it's only Newcastle. I won't, <laughs> I won't lie. To be fair, though, I, we, yeah, our know. first game of the season was against Brighton, and they were they were good. Like they're a good they're a good team. They're very very strong defensively. They're very I hard mean, to break down. To to be completely unique and and say something that not anyone else has said at all, but Lamptey is a class right back, and he's smashing it at Brighton. And the one that Chelsea let go. Yeah, but uh, Rhys James still better than him, so it's fine. 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean, I say this every single week, we should beat Brighton, we should be beating these teams, but it depends which United wants to turn up. Uh, I, I couldn't All tell I'm saying I, is I've put Dunk think. back in my team for United. <laughs> But you know what it is as well? They they might see you at a bit of a weak point. I mean, obviously, you smashed Mighty Luton, but they might see you as a bit of a weak point and try and get some important three points out of you. Maybe. You never know. But the same thing is with teams like this, they always show up against us. The keepers always show up against United because <laughs> they just want to piss us off. So, I mean, we should win. I think we will win. I think we'll bounce back. Putting the trust behind the players... I'm going to say, you know what, fuck it, 3-0 United. Oof, redemption. I think a lot of very lazy pundits put Brighton to go down um, <laughs> and with no with no real reason. Like, Ben White is an upgrade on Duffy. Duncan Duffy have been a phenomenal mm. partnership, like that sort of burnley S Tarkowski and me. Um, yeah. Webster's young as well he's doing well you've got Lalana in there who did get hooked admittedly um, on the opening day didn't he but you know he's he's a good he's a Premier League winner that they've brought yeah. in you've got Mapai and Trossard look fantastic yeah. I don't see that many weaknesses I don't think they're going to challenge for the top half of the table but I don't see that for me they're one of the most stable and also that you they're walking out every week in that kit. Oh, the kit! <laughs> God, put some confidence in you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who would put them in the bottom three. I certainly wouldn't. To be fair, that. I did put them in the oh, did bottom you, three. Sorry, have I just called you lazy? <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> You're like those those oh, lazy yeah. pundits. Ah, yeah, them all of them. <laughs> oh no, I pundits. changed them for Villa, well, so I'm all right. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Okay. You well, well, like I said, we're going to revisit those results. Well, those uh, predictions. Yeah, I'm sorry, point, bro. So yeah. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> so, so the next. Sorry, Adam. I was just going to say you've got West Brom next, haven't you? We do. JJ. The mighty, the mighty baggies, the highest football ground in the UK. Uh, fun fact that everyone knows. Uh, baggies are a bit doing a bit shit at the minute, aren't they? Everyone, they everyone kind of said they would go down this season. They haven't particularly impressed at the start of the season. Uh, they actually they lost to Brentford uh, yesterday, I think, in the cup. It did go to Pens, but they lost to Brentford in the cup. Mm. Uh, Slavin mm. Bilic got red carded in their their last game uh, against Everton. Everton slapped them, although like, they still scored two. That uh, what's his name? Uh, the one at West Ham let go with uh, Garner. Is it Garner? Oh, um, Dian, Dian Garner. I think wait. his name is. Do, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, I watched that game. He was really good that game. He's one of their like shining lights. Like if he can come up and pull something out of the bag, they might get a win uh, in games. But to be honest, it's it, as Adam just said. Uh, it, the the running theme is we should win this game. Uh, it's for us. It'll be it's good to get these games uh, against lower league opposition to you know get minutes with our new players. Uh, to tonight we play Barnsley and. Josh's favourite, Thiago Silva's playing, Chilwell might be playing, the likes of Pulisic and Ziyech are just getting back into the side. So games like this are good for them to get money. It's, I mean, it's purely just because we should be winning these games on paper. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to say it depends, actually, because if Mendy comes in, I won't be as nervous. But if Kepa's still playing, <laughs> I would say 2-1 to us. But if Mendy's in, got, I'm going to say 3 They've got to have to score, aren't they, if Kepa's playing? Yeah. I think he, I think even if Mendy is in by then he won't be he won't be either registered or he will, he will not I'd be very very surprised yeah, even bit, if he's announced it's a bit quick if he, isn't if he it? Plays. yeah so yeah and all, a bit quick and also if there's one way to destroy a keeper's confidence which is already up at rock bottom mm. it's to just chuck him to the curb immediately <laughs> I think that'll be poor management yeah. if he was. I mean, let's we, especially against West Brom. You should be able to afford to have Kepper in net and still beat West Brom. I think I, I think Caballero. Well, Caballero is going to play tonight. Obviously, I think Caballero might just play t- uh, that game and just it'd be one of those. Well, if 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 either of them get beaten by Hal Robson Carney, they should be sold. <laughs> um, yeah, very. That's all very I'll say. True. But yeah, it's, I, I, I'm excited for this game. Uh, like I said. 3 0. Let's say 3 0. Fuck it. We're going to go for two 3 0s so far. Josh, you play nice. Newcastle. Is it going to be 3 0? Well, uh, Jay, um, I think you're missing that, in fact, t- 
Tottenham tomorrow travel to Macedonia oh, sorry, sorry. to play Estija Tetovo. Ain't, sorry, I know it, Which, that is so mad that if you did play Orient yesterday, that you'd be playing again on Thursday and then again on Sunday? Is it Sunday you play? Yeah. That is insane, man. Yeah, we were like absolutely um, getting screwed over by it. So, you know, um, commiserations to Leighton Orient, but realistically, it's one of the best things that could have happened to us in terms does that, of our Sorry, does legs. that mean that you're like automatically through now? I'm not sure. Well, they haven't actually announced that yet. It kind of has to mean that, in my opinion, because there's nowhere to squeeze this game in because yeah. the next round is in about a week. Uh, yes, yeah, next week, isn't it? It's next week. So if we don't <laughs> play that game, then no no disrespect to Barnsley. Um, let's assume that you're winning tonight. Yeah. What are you going to do to Tottenham and Chelsea? How, how are you going to postpone that back? Yeah, I mean, Josh, we, we said it last week, but they they should have done uh, a, t- a 22 v 22 late in all <laughs> Spurs, but Chelsea Barnsley. Well, they should have. It would have it, that spread the COVID <laughs> even further. But um, no, it's one of those interesting ones. Um, I don't know if anyone saw the incredibly lazy, pathetic journalism from Oliver Holt. Uh, he is a Chelsea fan. He despises Tottenham. Um saying that why should we get a free pass and further push uh, Leighton Orient to extinction? Um, this is a club that Harry Kane literally sponsors. <laughs> um, he is their sponsor. He thankfully doesn't have his face or name on their shirts. He has no, charities, mind. That'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> Just his face. Under. Mind, thank you, NHS. That's the kind of stuff he has on the shirt. Um, I think he has a children's charity on the away as well. Um, Tottenham have paid for the to do the COVID tests. Yeah. Um, obviously, there would have been no ticket revenue because of COVID, but Tottenham have also offered to reimburse Leighton Orient the TV revenue that they would have got. Yeah. And finally, Tottenham fans in their massive masses have flooded the Leighton Orient shop and spent 20 grand in a night. Really? On just random Leighton Orient merchandise. So they've earned more money than they would ever get from playing this fixture. And believe it or not, Oliver Holt hasn't read his miserable head since that's happened. <laughs> so just, you know, there are some people that, you know, he is the head writer of the Daily Mail and, you know, we're out here grinding, doing this for free and he's out there spouting shite for national newspapers. That's what, my, that, is, that is the tough um, thing about what we do and it's like you look up and sometimes mm. you're just like, really? But yeah, I mean, uh, what was you get hit with the what shit from the what big guys on? above you. <laughs> so if you're watching. Um, yeah. Calling all of a hot. Anyway, Newcastle. so yeah, um, it's one of those things. Um, just to, well, quickly with Tetovo, um, I will be that basic. We should win, but then again, you saw what happened to us um, in the Europa League. Last I completely week. forgot about we got that, lucky. mate. Oh my I days! Know. We uh, we haven't really had t- we haven't really had time to speak about that. No, we got we got away with that one, nine. I can't even remember the name. <laughs> nine Plovid. men, um, Plovid. Nine men, Plovid. But hey, we got through. It's all that matters. I think we probably were just a bit lethargic. Hopefully we'll attack this with a bit more oomph, you know, get, just get it over with and with a few fresher legs. I'd be quite concerned going into this game if a few players had played against Leighton Orient last night. Mm. Let's see how that one goes. We should, we should win that comfortably. We should have won the last one comfortably. There's not really much analysis I can do there. I cannot name you a Tet Tovo player. <laughs> um, <laughs> nah, that's fair. When it comes to Newcastle, though, I can um, name many Newcastle players. <laughs> I can name at least three Newcastle. No, um, it seems you know I shouldn't say this because it will come back and bite me. But they've started playing this front two of a flat back four with Carroll and um, um, Wilson. Mm. Wilson, th- th- that doesn't fill me with much fear. They'll knock two pastors now, but you know if he. Perseveres with Andy Carroll for one more game. But then again, what happened last season? Tottenham were doing all right. And Newcastle beat us 1-0. We should have had two penalties. It was the game that um, Lascelles rugby tackled Kane. So sometimes things won't go against you. I don't think it'll be comfortable. I think we'll be tired, especially if we have to dig ourselves out of the Europa League again. But I think we will get enough for a 2-1 win nice. over Newcastle. Um, actually, is it home or away? Because if it's away, we're a hundred percent winning. But if it's at home, Newcastle are winning. Oh yeah, well, you're at home, so. uh, that's 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 how we have a deal with Newcastle. Now, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, um, where essentially we just allow each other to win in our own homes. Newcastle so, are also oh well. playing the mighty Morecambe tonight as well. So. 
well, hopefully Morecambe can absolutely drain the fuck out of that. <laughs> um, t- yeah, <laughs> no, it'll be it'll be it's always a stressful one with Newcastle. They're a bit of a bogey team, so no, there will be no three nil predictions from me, but there will be positivity, and hopefully we can get the likes of Regulon. Um, Bale will not be seen for a while, unfortunately. But is it that bad? I no. thought it was like a couple of weeks away. Yeah, yeah, but that th- this is in four Sorry, days. You said you said in a while. I thought you meant a well, while. a while as in a while as in it, it, we're looking at a few okay, weeks. Okay. Sorry, not half a season. Yeah. Well, he might, he might, <laughs> he might. No, no, touch wood, he doesn't just fall <laughs> over just, again. But hey, does his hammy play we'll golf see. or something? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so, oh, and Josh, you wanted me to mention this. So I wrote, wrote it down. You should be signing another centre back, much to uh, Adams. Upset. Oh. Yeah, well, Adam, if we pull this one off, um, apparently we're in Spa- we're in Italy at the moment. Sorry, looking at the signing of striker Milik, who is someone I'm not too sure about uh, from Napoli. He looks he's been very injury prone for a very long time, and Napoli are clearly looking to offload him. So you know, a backup striker is good, but also Meh. a risk. Uh, but the big one for me is uh, we're looking at Inter Milan's Skrini- Skriner? Skriner? Skriniar. <laughs> Skriniar, I like it. Um, he's lost his place to um, Bastoni recently mm-hmm. um, in that lineup, but Bastoni's young, he's got some legs. Um, Skriniar is regarded, I would say, as, as... He would be regarded as world-class by some people, but I, I would say, personally, that bracket just underneath world-class. Just below like, Thiago Silva. He over. is a top... <laughs> He is a top top centre back. He's big. He's strong. He's tall. He's like he's like a not he's not Italian. He's Croatian, but he's um he's that league's equivalent of Nicola Sula in my eyes. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh no! Oh, yeah, giant he's, of a man. He's a really good defender. Man. Quite good on the ball. Um, and you know, if Tottenham again, this is I'll I'll mention this in my video early later in the week. But if this goes through, you're looking at players now which are very much Mourinho players: Regulon, Skriniar, Doherty. You know, we're moving away from this kind of nice potch area. We uh, we might not particularly like some of the football we're playing, but he's signing a few more winners. You'll be, yeah, mm-hmm. but I say and you'll, a few more top, you'll be top happy players. if you're winning, mate. Uh, I mean, and yeah. and if if you do get this one over the line, and to be fair, even if you don't, you've had a really good window. Mm, no, absolutely. If, if we if we bring in a striker, even if it is, I'm not convinced by Milik, and then a centre back. Our um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the, it's probably it could be regarded as the best transfer window in Tottenham's history. And to be honest, not as impressed, not as speculatively impressive, but we're sort of closing in on your transfer window in terms of like they're they're, they're definitely comparable. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, you you bring in a uh, very talented Premier League players, proven. You've got Gareth Bale, a superstar, regular, an up and coming left back who was the best left back in. The league and I say, yeah, no, you fucking, you've done really well. I mean, it might not, it might not, you know, I don't, I'm not, uh, you, I do think your transfer window, sorry, Adam, you can just cry in the corner <laughs> about this transfer talk, but I do, uh, I do think, I am jealous of your transfer window, but I think we've already discussed this, like, Scrinia might not happen, but if it does, there's probably a part of you that would kind of be willing to trade one of your attacking prospects for someone like that at the back. Yeah. Not ne- I'm not saying he's... The, but you, I just think, because that is the one thing Chelsea are missing now. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely, definitely. You're right. Um, so re- before we wrap it up, do we do we want to mention Liverpool-Arsenal that much, really? That's the biggest game this week, but we, we all... Feel I just hope hate. it's nil-nil or 1-1 one, one in the 85th yeah. minute when all uh, residents get booted out of the I think, I think Liverpool <laughs> will turn them over, to be honest with you. It's annoying. It's a weird one. I kind of hope that happens because Arsenal's happy train will end a little bit. Because mm. knowing them, they'll be happy, happy train. Tra- they'll let <laughs> Arsenal's happy <Yeah>. train. <laughs> We're um, talking about top class journalism. Arsenal's happy train will end. Uh, but also, ultimately, I I want us to close the gap on Liverpool. I want there to be more of a title challenge this season. So these are the kind of games. Yeah, but if Arsenal beat Liverpool, then you've got a whole confident Arsenal to worry oh, yeah, about no, this, with more points yeah, than Liverpool. Is, so. is, yeah, exactly. So a draw. <laughs> a very boring draw. Yeah, a draw would be kind of... I I'm personally want Liverpool to win because I have slightly more hatred uh, than the both of you. But um, I do think that it will be a close game. I do think Arsenal have grown a lot. I think they'll struggle to get past them a lot more, Liverpool. But... Again, um, I think 
Liverpool will show us why they signed Thiago. And if it is tight, that'll be the difference. I'm not sure if he'll start, but... Cool. I think fun. we're done, boys. That was a good pod, wasn't it? I had a good time. Um, I'm very sorry that my rant uh, died. I was quite proud of that one. I, I switched off, off to be for a while. Josh, so. <laughs> um, of course you did just like your uh, entire transfer committee but uh, we'll, we'll leave it there <laughs> alright that's it um, uh, thanks for watching everyone uh, make sure you like and subscribe before you tell your dad I'll do that as well tell your dad to like and subscribe <laughs> tell your dad to like and subscribe as well as you get you both your tablets up together and sort of do it together that would be a wholesome moment experience, experience yeah, for you and your dad yeah. um, hopefully I'll, uh, I'll have some proper earphones next week yeah, I forgot about the title beach, yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll play college, you know. <laughs> <laughs>